Shortly before 3 a.m. this morning, we, we responded to the 16,000 block of East Ithaca on call of shots fired. Uh, when officers arrived, they determined that there was a male inside who we believe is armed and dangerous. In addition, we believe that there are three to four other people inside with him. Just four miles away and six months after the infamous Batman movie massacre, four died today, this Saturday morning, after a gunman barricaded himself and held off the SWAT team in Aurora, Colorado. Meanwhile, the man charged in the, uh, the original, the July movie massacre in Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes, goes to court Monday for a preliminary hearing. And today's incident is sure to fuel the gun control debate that's been raging ever since the slaughter of innocents in Sandy Hook at the elementary school there less than a month ago. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is my, uh, is my proposal. I think it's in two parts. First of all, in terms of buying guns, I think all guns should be registered. They all have serial numbers. They all should be registered on a national database. Secondly, I think you need mandatory criminal and mental health background checks for all gun purchases. Isn't that a no-brainer? You need two references to adopt a cat at the ASPCA. Include gun shows in that mandatory criminal and mental health background checks for everyone who buys a gun. And mandatory reporting for all guns that are sold, destroyed, lost, or stolen. Part two, and here are the restrictions. I think that the military assault style rifles have to be banned. Silencers have to be banned. What do you need sound suppressors on weapons for? I think high capacity magazines have to be banned. Why do I have an asterisk next to those? Because I think the sanctioned gun clubs, there should be an exception for them. And of course, military and law enforcement related uh, agencies also, obviously, there should be an exception for them. Here to debate my proposals for gun control are Larry Pratt, you know, the fiery executive director of the Gun Owners of America. Larry, welcome back. And Dan Gross, the president of the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. Okay, Larry, you first. Will you accept any restrictions on the sale of weapons, Larry? Uh, no chance, Geraldo. You're not going to stop crime. All of your ideas pretty much were in effect in Connecticut, didn't do any good. Uh, what we need to do is empower people rather than make it harder for the good guys to be able to protect themselves. We were dealing in Connecticut with a situation that was a gun-free zone. And it's so sad that over the last 20 years, with all of the mass murders that have occurred, they've taken place in gun-free zones. You would think that we would start to reconsider. So, Larry, maybe you're against any restrictions whatsoever. You don't want any restrictions on the weapons that are sold, period. Right. I, I think if uh, somebody wants to buy a semi-automatic with a large magazine, uh, that's a very good idea. The co Korean merchants that defended themselves in the Watts riots, the uh, people that defended themselves after Katrina uh, around New Orleans. James Holmes, those that have uh, Adam Lanza. Well, the problem was nobody in those venues, nobody else, Jared had Lochner a gun. In Arizona. They, knew that they, were, they knew that they were going into a gun-free zone. Lochner was a, technically an exception. It was a town hall meeting of the congresswoman. But in fact, it was Democrats. And, and I'm not trying to be a wise guy. <laughs> yeah, they just don't guy, believe right? in carrying. <laughs> no, they don't believe in carrying guns. All right, Dan Gross, uh, president of, of the Brady campaign uh, to stop... Uh, uh, armed violence, your response. Well, I mean, listen, the Columbine had an armed security guard just like is being proposed. Fort Hood was loaded with guns and, you know, there was a terrible mass tragedy mm -hmm. that occurred there. I mean, the bottom line, though, is, you know, we can't lose hope uh, when, you know, people are espousing what this gentleman's uh, espousing. This is not the conversation that the overwhelming majority of reasonable Americans want to have. We don't think the answer to violence is more violence. We don't think the answer to guns is more guns. Seventy-four percent of NRA members themselves support sensible measures like criminal background checks, the kind of measures you were just talking about. So when somebody gets up there and says, you know, gets on your program and says that they support no restriction whatsoever, like background checks, that the overwhelming 92 percent of Americans support criminal background checks, I think we all need to take heart in the fact that he's not speaking for us. He's not even speaking for the members of the NRA. Larry, uh, you're really suggesting that if someone, for instance, if they're on the no-fly list, because of uh, alleged terrorist background. If they've just been released from a mental institution, you, you, don't, you want them to be able to buy guns, those, those two categories, for example? 
You know, they have gun registration in Canada. They have had since 1934. Is the answer they yes, never, Larry, that you want they, the no-fly yeah, uh, guy and the, uh, and the yeah, mentally you, ill person? And they have never solved a crime in Canada. So now you're talking about putting people on a gun ban list where no due process has been uh, followed, where somebody says he's... Uh, a bad guy. If they've let him out of the mental institution, the presumption is he's safe to be on the street. If that presumption is not correct, maybe they better keep him in the institution. All right, Larry Pratt, you stand by. Uh, Dan Gross, you stand by. We'll debate further, and then I'll make my decision on what to do about this baby. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. The bus has arrived on time. The kids all got off the bus. A lot of them were happy to see their friends they hadn't seen in a while. They're excited about the new school. The furniture from their classrooms, the, the things that are familiar to them, the things that were up on the wall, their, the work they had done that was posted on the bulletin boards, those things have been brought over. The, the school is not identical. It is set up differently. The classrooms are set up differently, but they'll be comfortable seeing their desk with their name on it. As the survivors of the elementary school massacre head back to school, a different school, and by the way, I don't think the old school should ever be reoccupied. I think that as a, as a memorial for the children who were slain and the teacher and the teachers and the principal, they should level that, make it a memorial lawn, maybe a statue or something to remember the children. They should never try to reoccupy occupy that. Uh, in New Jersey, uh, one town in New Jersey has become the first in the nation to announce that they will have armed security at all schools. Uh, in that context, we're debating gun control with Larry Pratt, the executive director of the Gun Owners of America, and Dan Gross, the president of the Brady Campaign Against Armed Violence. Uh, I want to put a, back up my, uh, my suggestions for what uh, the president and uh, the vice president who's leading the effort uh, should be working for, in my opinion. I think all weapons should be registered. All cars are registered. Why not all weapons registered? I think there should be mandatory criminal and mental health background checks for all gun purchases, including those at gun shows. Mandatory reporting for all guns sold, destroyed, lost, or stolen. And then on the banned side, I think the military assault rifles should be banned, uh, silencers banned, high capacity magazines banned, except for gun clubs who are sanctioned, uh, which are sanctioned, and uh, obviously the military and law enforcement. Larry Pratt, what's the uh, legal or practical use of a silencer? Why would you, oppo you would be opposed to the banning of silencers? What, do you, what does a law abiding person need a silencer on a weapon? Well, in Norway, they're sold uh, and people are encouraged to buy them uh, so when they're hunting or target shooting, they're not going to disturb their neighbors. They don't think about uh, firearms the way we do. They take them rather more as a, as a tool, something that they're going to be using, and the silencer is, has a very practical utility. It's not looked at as the criminal's friend. Okay, hold it right there, Larry. What about silencers? Dan Gross. Yeah, I mean, you have to question anything that's just made for the purpose of aiding and abetting <laughs> the taking of human life. And, you know, things like a pistol grip on a weapon that allows you to fire multiple rounds from down low, a barrel shroud that prevents a barrel from getting excessively hot so you can still grip it and spray fire into a crowd, a silencer. I mean, these are, you know, that, that's the conversation the American public wants to have. And again, every time somebody like Larry Pratt talks, I just need to remind the American public not to lose hope that this guy is only speaking for a very small percentage of extremists out there. Uh, Larry Pratt, I'm not sure about the percentage, uh, though, Dan. I have, to, I have to mention that part. But Larry Pratt, let me... Uh... Yeah, most Americans believe in self-defense, and they'd be very yeah, happy to self -defense have some doesn't... of these firearms. I don't understand why people need multiple assault-style weapons. Why? I, I know guys that, that have a semi-automatic that can fire four shots in a second, one second. They're, they're flying off the shelves. There are stores that you can't even find an AR-15. So the American people are voting with their dollars. And what are they afraid of, the American people, Larry? Well, the government... Why are they buying fast... these weapons? The government that gave us Fast and Furious obviously has some problems morally. Uh, we're to trust them uh, to defend us uh, with their judgment on who to put on a no-fly list when they actually supplied firearms to the Mexican cartel, where we know at least 400 people have been murdered directly linked to a U.S. federal government program. I think the idea that we trust them with uh, good judgment is a big, serious mistake. They have not earned it. 
I mean, let's just go back to the basic question that he wouldn't answer before. You know, do you support background checks on gun sales to prevent the the mentally, um, the seriously ment mentally ill, um, dangerously mentally ill people, criminals, domestic abusers from purchasing guns? You know, that's a question that they just won't answer because this is not about any one regulation. This is about an extremist agenda that wants to prevent any sensible measure that, no matter how demonstrably, it will save human lives. And that's, you know, fortunately, that's the conversation that the American public wants to have. I, well, I, I, friend, I, I see that you're opposed to due process. You don't ever pause to say, well, we yeah, we ought to have a trial. We ought to have evidentiary uh, proceedings. We ought to have adversarial procedures available so that if we're going to deprive somebody of a constitutional right, which I think can be done, then we have to go through the procedures. It's not a constitutional right. Do you support background checks on 100 percent of gun sales? The uh, Second Amendment is a constitutional right. No, do you right, do? I friend. know the Second Amendment is a constitutional right. Do you support right, background checks, su Larry? Yeah. Do you support background checks? If you have people in a database that have been convicted of crimes, yep. uh, violent crimes, uh, whether they were nuts or not, of course. So you would support background checks on 100% of gun sales at gun shows over the not internet 100%, on the website? Not 100%. Of course not. Of course right. not. Of course Only not. the people yeah, that, and that deserve says it all. to I mean, be how do there. You, know? okay, right. you, full, full you stop, want to see stop. this yeah. as a tell tool again, to go grab everybody's my, guns. My fellow NRA members, yep. tell me again, how do they support your point of view, Larry Pratt's point of view, or where do they fall in these? Seventy-four percent of NRA members support criminal background checks. Now, they, my wife wants me to quit and tear said. up this card right now. What do you suggest I do, Dan Gross, of the Brady campaign against armed violence? You might be surprised, but I actually suggest you don't. I suggest that you fight the power from within, and you de you help demonstrate because you're such a powerful demonstration of it of what the average American and what the average NRA m member supports and believes. And I think you actually have an opportunity by remaining a member to show that the average American, the average NRA member, you know, we're parents, we're mothers, we're fathers, decent law-abiding citizens. You like to hunt, you like to shoot recreationally. You don't want a tragedy like what happened in Newtown. Stay in the NRA. And if NRA. you want to, Wayne to move forward, Wayne LaPierre, I'm staying in, I'm paying my of... dues. You're going to have to deal with me and the 74% that Dan Gross says wants sensible gun control. Larry Pratt, thank you. Dan Gross, thanks for the thank advice. You, uh, I hope you'll let your elected officials know you support sensible gun control. Thanks very much for watching. Good night.